is finally here. I'm going to give you the van tour today. This is an unconverted van tour. So this is how the van looks now before I convert it. I thought I would sort of give you a before and after and what better way to do that than give you a sort of a good look around Nevis. Bandilla. So as you can see, we've got a beautiful day in Scotland today. Tomorrow, Friday, we go back into lockdown where I live. Thought I would take the opportunity today to get out in the beautiful sunshine. Hopefully, if we stick to the guidelines, we might be able to see our families at Christmas time, which is only in five weeks away, by the way. Yeah, it's just flying in this year. It's just been a complete blur. On a positive note, though, let's move away from lockdown and talk about the joy of owning this beautiful camper van. Literally driven about five miles from where I live up to a car park up the campsies and I've got the roof up and it's not too busy. There's a few cars here but it's not too busy. Come into my office. Here we go. As you probably already know if you've watched one of my previous videos when I was up in Fintorn, this van is my brand new, I've only had it about a month or so, maybe a month and a half. It's not brand new, it's 25 years old, but this is Nevis Vanzilla. So this is a 25 year old Mazda Bongo, neat green colour apparently with a silent silver base. Um, I'll show you all the sort of exterior shots in a wee second as well. But I just wanted to give you a wee quick look around to what it currently looks like. Before I go and give you the sort of guided tour, I just wanted to talk quickly about why I decided to buy a camper van. Now you'll know last year I had access to a van and it wasn't mine, so I decided that I wanted to save up and buy my own van. So I save up and I bought this one. And I bought this um, from a guy down in Coventry. Interior wise, it's in great condition. The, the roof and stuff is in mint condition. All the sort of seats and stuff, all apart from needing a really good clean, because it looked like even a worky van or something. But apart from that, it's immaculate inside. I had to replace the material on the centre column though, that sort of grey material, because it was all ripped. The carpets in the front are ripped, but I'm probably going to rip them up and put new ones down. The carpet in here is absolutely fine. I gave this a really good scrub and a really good clean. I wanted to buy a van because I've always been an outdoors type of person since I was a kid. And when I was a kid, we had three camper vans. We had a Volkswagen Type 2.5, I think it was. And we had two Fiat Amigos. And if you know them, they're tiny. And we were a family of five. So with three of us, me and my two brothers were up in the roof. I've always been in camper vans since I was tiny. We used to go camping at Butlins and stuff like that in them. And it was just an absolute joy and it left such a lasting memory with me. So I figured from me and my family, my own son, I would bring, I would basically give him the same experience that I had as a kid. So I decided to buy one and I absolutely fell in love with this van. Instantly fell in love with this van. I remember when I first picked it up, I had it in an Asda car park and I just walked around it, just like stroking it and stuff. I do get very attached to my cars though, I've got a habit of doing that. But this one in particular really really just I fell in love with it. It's obviously the outside as I'll show you has a few battle scars in it but that's why we called it Vanzilla because it's green so it looks a bit like Godzilla but it's got some scars so and as I said before it does look like it's been in a fight with somebody but so far I've actually managed to pull out quite a lot of the dents myself and I've repainted some bits so it's getting there. I mean I've still got a whole pile of work to do. When I first bought it as well the fuel gauge didn't even Work, so I had to get that fixed so otherwise I had to just keep guessing how much fuel I was putting in it. So so far it's done two major trips. We went up to the um, up to Morayshire uh, and obviously you saw those videos and I've been to Aviemore and Cairngorms and you saw those videos. Unfortunately now because of the next three weeks of lockdown I won't be taking it anywhere. I'll show you my view just now. Hang on. I mean that is my view just now. How gorgeous is that? And the other good thing about this is I can sit and work on location, like I work all over Scotland as my job. When I was doing food photography I was working all over Scotland. Now I don't have to worry about, obviously during the summer months, I don't have to worry about hotels or anything like that. I can literally just go to a campsite and hook it up and enjoy the great outdoors. I think I've always known I was always meant to be outdoors all the time as much as I could be. <laughs> so, And photography is a massive part of that as well. And I'll show you my kitchen because I've added bits since the last time you saw it. So I'll need to show you how that looks. It looks awesome. I've still got to finish it though so don't judge me yet. <laughs> I've still got to get finished. For the how much it cost me it was worth every single penny. So I'll give you the tour. So as you can see there's the roof. There's the zippy bit. We also have here is under this we also have a midgy net. The guy that I bought it from is calling it a mosquito net and I was like no 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 it's midgy. So, and they are quite small those gaps so there's no way midges are getting through them. So <clears throat> oh I'll pull it back a bit. There we go. So we've got that. That also unzips all the way around. So you can have a panoramic view from your roof. So if I was doing astrophotography, I could sit here because that's right above. Oh, I can't lift it. 
that is right above the cabin of this bit here so I can literally sit on there and that takes a good bit of weight but I think I don't know why it's covered because it's not a mattress I mean it's it's solid and I'm obviously in the roof so I can't show you it but it's basically these two struts here um, are hydraulics and you just pull it down with your hands like this to get this part down and then this part here becomes your bed over there and this little hatch here can flip over and then it covers this obviously we've got a sunroof which you can close and open as much as you want won't really fail at the van and then up there you've got an additional light and this light which is really cool for downstairs and that nobody knows I think it's for passing like stuff up to your wains I'm not sure what that's for maybe that's the ejector button I don't know but yeah that's the roof and it's on these two bits here and it goes up and down via these buttons here so if you remember last year we were away in the tartan camper van and that was a Volkswagen Type 5 camper van. Um, the roof was a slightly different setup. You had this bit here was more open and then the roof kind of went from here to here and it was sort of three boards and then you could just sort of push them back and stand up, which was very manual. Obviously my worry with this is that, or my only worry with this is because it's electronic and these are on motors that um, if there's any sort of issues in the circuit somewhere, the roof wouldn't come back down, which would kind of worry me. So far so good, I've not had any issues with it, but that's one thing that I kind of preferred about Type 5 was it just had sort of ratchets and you grabbed a hold of the roof and then sort of pulled it down and then ratcheted it in place so that it was it was solid when it was down and it wasn't going to move anywhere in the wind. I don't know, I might convert, I might, I mean people might think I'm mad doing that but I might eventually go for a manual roof rather than an electronic roof. But this is just beautiful Japanese design, this is just top of the range. For a 25 year old van it's exceptionally modern. Yeah, I'll give you the rest of the tour. So that's the roof. <laughs> So as I mentioned before, these are the two seats here which hook up to that seat belt and that seat belt but they also fold down and become tables so you can use them for apparently playing Animal Crossing um, and you also have these two bench seats here as well which uh, also fold forward which I'll show you like that they fold forward like that and that gives you access to this bit and as I told you before I put some lights under here there's lights on also I put lights all the way along here as well you can't really see them because it's broad daylight here just now but that is really handy for night time because you can actually see what you're getting under into so I'll go show you the rest of the kitchen just now and I should also mention as well you've got all this space under the chairs for storage boxes that's just got my blinds um, mallets a brush because it gets as you can see gets kind of dirty <laughs> Um, and my, la my lanterns and stuff like that are all in there as well so that just goes under there I and mean, they're just under bed storage boxes which you can get for like 3 quid and under there I put my camera bags under there and my clothes bags and stuff it really does need a good brush I've just came in though from being outside so and in this whole chair this whole seat here is just sort of slide back as well one thing I'm going to purchase uh, probably in December is a table and the table will go there from there to there with a bar and then it comes all the way out and that means that you don't really need to use these as tables you could essentially just put a cushion along them and use them as a seat and then have two seats and a table in the middle so I'm considering doing that but I'll take you to the back hello there's my new stickers and that one which is very apt so this is the back which you didn't see in the last video Here's my kitchen. So this wasn't like this the last time you saw it, it was just this part here which as I said before that's just some uh, worktop material from B&Q and I just kind of stuck it all together. Measured the inside the van and then stuck it all together and then just shoved it in. This bit here is relatively new. I'm going to put hooks and stuff in it so that I can hang things because I noticed that the stuff in here sort of sat on top of each other and it was falling about in the back. My stove usually sits in there, I thought it was there and it's not there. <laughs> must be still in the house so my stove usually sits up here now which is kind of in this space here and you've got little sort of shelves down here storage buckets that I got from like B&M's for a couple of pounds and they have these sort of like coffee things I mean they were like a pound for a bag of quail sachets my son's influence Minecraft sugar TNT tea <laughs> and uh, they've got napkins and stuff in there as well so that's what I keep in that one. All the sort of UHT milk and mugs and stuff that you would normally take with you camping but I like to have proper mugs when I'm out. I like to try and just kind of reuse as much as I can. So I brought my actual mugs out but these are appropriate though for the van. They've got like 
mountains and stuff on them. So, so I got this very recently from Halfords for 25 quid. It's got a circuit breaker at the top and you've got three plugs and then the rest of the cable and then obviously that's the usual bit that goes into the campsite and the hookup. So that was money well spent because a lot of people worry that when they're running a cable into the van, basically turns the van into like a giant live electric box. So the good thing about this is it's got the circuit breaker at the top, so I feel much safer using this. So the only thing is I had it hooked up to a campsite in Abbeymore and I tried to use this heater inside the van. It's just a plug, so I thought plugging it into that would work, but it didn't work. So I thought it was something wrong with the heater, so I took it home and um, it was working fine. So 240 volts, 370 watts. So I didn't think that would like be too much for a campsite hookup for the, to overload it however, so I'm not sure why it didn't work. But that would have been good because it, it was pretty cold that night. You know, I wouldn't go camping in the van just now because it's far too cold at night and I don't have the right heating sort of set up yet. I mean, I've got the hookup and I've got a sort of makeshift sort of rear conversion, but I mean, I don't have the sort of facilities to stay warm. So for modifications for this bit, I'm still going to put a door on here, a door there and a door here and they're just going to have the little push buttons and that will keep everything safe because a couple of times I've opened up the boot and everything's fell out <laughs> so I don't know if that says something about my driving but it's ideal and it's perfect for what I need I don't need a big I mean I would love to have a fancy site conversion and a van conversion but not just now like that's that's way down the line probably next year I'll do all that sort of stuff but for just now this is perfect so last but not least this is the driver's side and I just wanted to show you as you can see down there that's in kilometres that bit they're in miles per hour, but that's in kilometres, so I need to keep kind of converting everything back. It must be a Japanese thing, but that's the front cabin there. Everything's pretty, pretty basic. It's been panel proofed, as you know, with the waterproof covers. It's also automatic. I have no idea what these are and what they mean. I just know that one's park, drive and neutral and reverse. <laughs> the only ones I use. But it's an automatic. That's my Christmas tree. Um, that was an ashtray but it had a whole bit inside it and I took it out and um, just spray painted it black but I'm going to get a cup holder um, that screws in here and then that'll be an extra cup holder as well. enjoyed my uh, little tour of my unconverted Mazda Bongo Nevis. It's my absolute pride and joy and um, I cannot wait to see what kind of adventures I can get up to once this whole lockdown coronavirus thing has hopefully passes next year. But as soon as we're able to I will be going off on sort of day trip adventures with it so we'll still be able to get out and get a bit of landscape talk done hopefully in the next few weeks. So I just want to say once again thank you so much for watching and I hope you're as excited about my adventures in this as, uh, as I am. And if you like this video then like and subscribe for more van life videos. Can't believe I get to say that. <laughs> and until next time I'll see you soon. Bye!